There are several ways you might see enzyme reactions pictured. I'm going to use kind of a comic strip model here where we have essentially time one in this box, the next scene, and the next scene after that. In the first scene, you usually see the enzyme pictured here, this is a big green blob, and the substrate, these two guys up in here. And then usually it will show an enzyme substrate complex where the two are bound together at the active site, followed by enzyme and the product, the actual chemical product of that, in this case, they have joined the substrates together. Now you might see something a little bit different. Instead of a comic strip, we might just represent that with arrows, either in the top example or the bottom, just as arrow means we're moving on to the next step. And another important one not to miss is sometimes you'll even see this backward arrow uh, not to indicate that the enzyme has moved anywhere, but that that enzyme gets reused. Which is a very important part of the enzyme reactions. There's another way you can illustrate this. Just this sort of static diagram where we have the substrate over here, two different ones. They meet in the active site again, and it kind of looks like they're bouncing out, but uh, this is kind of what might happen inside your cells. Product is produced and this enzyme just stays put. You know, nothing really happens to it. If it finds more substrate, it could catalyze another reaction. Let's look at just an example. Those are all generic names, but what if we put a name tag on this thing? This enzyme actually has a name, sucrose synthase, remember A-S-E, indicates that we have an enzyme. Here we have substrates, two very specific monosaccharides. They react uh, in sucrose synthase and produce the molecule or product sucrose that we're familiar with. 